Part of the brain that gets affected whenever you drink alcohol is the muscle control part of your brain. Now, if you were to make the letter C like that, place it right over your ears like this, this is the part of your brain that you would be touching that controls your muscles. What helped me to do this and this is that part of my brain right there, okay? When my eyes blink, muscle control, that's that part of the brain right there. Uh, if you like to run, that's muscle control. If you're good at texting, muscle control. Good at playing video games, muscle control. If you can flip a pancake in the air and catch it, muscle control. So whenever you see somebody staggering and walking around funny because they drink alcohol, they've drank enough alcohol that it's starting to affect the muscle control part of their brain. This is where you get people that slur words. This is where you get people that kind of like need to touch something. Uh, this is why if you drink too much and you lay down, you feel like the room is spinning because it's affecting the muscle control part of your brain. Now the thing is, uh, right inside your ear is where the part of your body that makes sure you are level. It's like a level inside your head. When you drink alcohol, that's where it gets messed up and you feel like things are spinning or you feel dizzy because it's affecting the muscle control part of your brain. Now anytime you see a police officer pull somebody over and they're having them do one of those field sobriety tests, what the officer is doing is he's attempting to check his muscle control. Because once you start to walk funny or move funny, that part of your brain's being affected, you're impaired to drive. You shouldn't be driving because your blood alcohol level is going to be uh, way too high once your muscle control is starting to be affected. So the thing is, um, great example, I don't know if you've ever seen cops on TV. I love watching cops. Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna... I love watching that show till they show my city of San Bernardino. Then I don't like watching cops anymore because I'm sitting there with my kids. I'm like, hey kids, <laughs> there's our house on TV again. But the thing is, they had one police officer. This police officer was out in Dallas, Texas. And he was driving his police car and... You know how they do it on cops. He looks in the camera and he goes, uh, we're obviously following the vehicle where this driver's intoxicated. I'm gonna pull this vehicle over. They show the front part of this vehicle and you see this pickup truck and it's weaving back and forth in traffic. So this police officer turns on his red light, hits his siren, boop, gets on the microphone. <laughs> Driver of the pickup truck, pull over to the side of the road. You see the pickup truck go over to the side of the road Goes up on the curb, boom, hits a park bench and it stops. Officer looks in the camera and goes, this driver is definitely intoxicated. I'm going to pull him out of his vehicle. Changes his red light to a white light. Gets on the microphone. He's like, driver of the pickup truck, please step out of your truck. You see the dude in the pickup truck open up the door. He looks back at the cop. When the dude looks back at the cop, boom. He falls out of the truck. He stands up, tries to shake it off. Police officer walks over to him and says, Sir, he says, you know why I pulled you over tonight? The guy looks in the camera and goes, No. He's like, Sir, you have been drinking tonight? The guy looks in the camera and he goes, No. He's like, Sir, how many beers have you had tonight? This guy goes, I had, uh-huh, yup, uh-huh, uh-huh, oh yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yep. Looks at the cop, looks at his fingers, and he goes, ah, two. Police officer says, sir. He says, can I give you a field sobriety test? Guy's like, go ahead, man, I'll pass. I don't have a problem, I'm not drunk. Police officer says, okay. He has a guy put both of his feet together where they're touching, okay? If you want to try this, go ahead. Put both of your feet together where they're touching. Take your hands out, put them to the side. Now put your palms up. Take your head, put it back, and look up towards the ceiling or the sky. Take your right foot, and I know you can't see this, but take your right foot, put it three inches above your left foot. Now what I want you to do with this finger right here is I want you to touch the tip of your nose. All right, good job. Go ahead and try with the other one like that, and good job, right? You can do that because you're not intoxicated. What this guy on this show did is he's standing there, man, and he's wobbling all over the place. He's trying to do everything he can to keep from falling over. Then the police officer had the guy put his head back and he's wobbling all over. Guy has his eyes shut. Police officer hasn't put his hands out the side like that. 
And then the officer tells him, touch your nose. I don't know if this guy couldn't hear or what, but it looked like he was trying to touch the police officer's nose. <laughs> That's not your nose, you know, and he's reaching all over the place. So the officer takes off his flashlight, turns it on, sets it down on the ground, and he tells that guy, that intoxicated guy, to walk towards that white beam of light. Now, when I saw that, I thought, oh my gosh, it's a good thing I'm not a cop. You know what I would do if I were a cop with a drunk guy at 2 o'clock in the morning and a flashlight? <laughs> Same thing some of you would do, right? Pick up that flashlight and start going like that. Come on! What's wrong with you, mister? <laughs> Get over that fence. There you go. Cross that freeway. <sighs> right? I need an ambulance out here, Route 31. <laughs> Man down, right? You see this guy trying to walk this white beam of light. He can't do it. He's going all over the place. Finally, the cop has the guy put his hands on the hood of the car. He starts to pat the guy down, hits the guy's pocket. He goes, sir, he says, do you have a weapon in your pocket? The guy's like, no. He's like, what's in your pocket, sir? The guy gets all quiet and goes, a beer. Let me tell you this. If you ever see somebody that is kind of staggering or feels a little bit dizzy from drinking alcohol, they are definitely impaired. One of the questions I get all the time when I'm talking with high school students, what is the very first sign that somebody is intoxicated? And I'll ask that question of them or they'll ask the question of me. What do you think the answer is? Is it when they slur their words? No, they're already intoxicated at that point. It's where they're walking funny? No. Is it when they get that big smile on their face? Yeah, you're getting close. The very first sign that your friend is intoxicated is if you have a friend that's kind of quiet and they drink just a little bit and they start talking a whole bunch more, that's the very first sign that they're being intoxicated. Because inside your head, you have that frontal lobe part that tells you to predict the future, or helps you to predict the future, and your inhibitions, things that you will and will not do. When you drink so much that that wall called inhibitions comes down, people can easily step over that wall that separates the I will do and I won't do side. When people drink alcohol, that wall goes down and they start talking a whole bunch more. I don't know if you've ever been in a restaurant and you'll see a table that's a little bit quiet and they'll have a few drinks and then they start laughing and being loud. That's because that front part of their brain is starting to disappear. So once you see somebody staggering or walking around, they're definitely too impaired to operate a vehicle. They'll end up doing something that they would not normally do. All it takes to be impaired is one and a half to three beers within the course of an hour. For it to start to affect your muscle control, anything over three beers within the course of an hour and a half or so. Me, a male, over the age of 21, I can only process one and a half cans of beer per hour. A female can only process one can of beer per hour. Anything above that, we're starting to become intoxicated.